to introduce one of my dearest fellow colleagues as well, Leo von Wies. I'm very pleased to have you on the stage here. Leo von Wies is a principal consultant at Zulke Engineering and he's an expert in business management and informatics and many other things. Today, we will have Leo von Wies talking us about serverless, ASP.NET Core on AWS Lambda. Sorry, Logan. It's today not uh, <laughs> Asher in this case, but welcome, we welcome everyone. Exactly. So, Leo Wies, serverless, ASP.NET Core on AWS Lambda. With you, the stage is yours, Leo Wies. Thank you, Jose, for the introduction. Yes. Um, I've been working as a consultant for quite some time, but I always value um, real stuff from time to time. And also always want to try things myself and see how stuff works out. And in particular, I'm, I've been working on .NET since it exists and was wondering how easy it is nowadays to get .NET stuff running all over the place. And one sample I recently did was I, I prefer MacBooks, so I work on a Mac and I develop in .NET and this stuff runs on AWS, on Linux machines and nobody cares anymore. So this will be a, a short little part on um, running web applications on AWS Lambda. I think you should see my slides, is that right? Perfect. Thank you. So I will not explain in great detail what Lambda is. I think most of you know it. It's a function as a service um, system. So you just upload some code and you don't care about any instances, web apps, anything. All you care about is your code and it just runs. And so what I would like to explore tonight is how that fits into ASP.NET Core so we'll have a short look at the building blocks of ASP.NET Core and how AWS Lambda fits into this picture, how simple it is to add Lambda support and how simple it is again to deploy all this and get it to work. So I think most of you are quite aware of the building blocks of ASP.NET Core with of course the application code um, all of us develop with our business logic and everything at the very bottom. Then we have the ASP.NET Core middlewares. We saw a few examples of them uh, just a few minutes ago when we looked at authorization and authentication. That's all the middleware part. Then on top of that is the web server actually handling the low level HTTP stuff. And this may be, the, the Casper web server may be the one you're actually using um, towards your clients. Usually you will actually have a proxy, a reverse proxy in front of it. Now, um, if we want to have Lambda as the entry point, of course we have no regular web server anymore. So there is no such thing as IAS or Apache. So the picture changes a little bit because the entry point is now some AWS structure like an application load balancer, an API gateway, or any other HTTP capable um, item that AWS might be coming up with. And then we of course need a bridge between this AWS item and our own code. And this is a so-called Lambda entry point, which will be part of the application that we deploy and will create this link between AWS and the ASP.NET Core middlewares and our code. Now, of course, this um, sounds more complicated than it is because this um, Lambda entry point is actually one line of code. You add a NuGet package for the Amazon Lambda ASP.NET Core server, and you create your entry point class, which inherits from an Amazon built-in class, and that's it. So 
this is the whole glue that you need between AWS and your own code. If you try this yourself afterwards, you will see that there are different variants of this base class that you will need to use depending on the type of Amazon endpoint that you use. So this is the one for an application low balancer, as the name suggests. There are others for API gateways in different forms. So yeah, that's what you do, but why would you actually want to do that? I think the most interesting scenario is that when you have an ASP.NET Core application that you are developing locally, it's much easier to do that in the plain old fashion and not have to decide yet on your runtime environment. So with this little addition, you can actually have one piece of code that will work as a regular web server and will also work in a serverless way on Lambda. Depending on your scenario, this might actually be very handy, I think. Now, those of you who have tried to deploy um, anything to Lambda before may remember that it's kind of um, fiddly. There are many moving parts. You need to set up an application, a function, a trigger. You need to care about all kinds of identity and access management roles and execution rights and stuff. And so um, this is the second part I'd like to show you because if it's so easy to create a bridge, it should be easy to deploy as well. So deploying something to Lambda is very simple if you do it with the tools that Amazon provides. My favorite way is using the cloud development kit because when I type um, XML or YAML or stuff like that, I always have lots of typos. And that's why I'm very happy to have a compiler help me sort stuff out. And the Cloud Development Kit is a way to define infrastructure in C Sharp, in code. So that's what it looks like. You define your stack with the resources and you basically tell it that you want to have a Lambda function. You tell it where to get the code from. You tell it how the name of your entry point. Then you tell it you want to have a load balancer that should listen on port 80 and that should trigger your Lambda function. So as you can see, that's about 15 lines of code, including lots of braces. And that's all there is. So you just compile this and then execute a CDK deploy command and you have running stuff on Lambda. So um, I prepared a sample, which I will gladly show you and you can look it up. You have it on my website and on GitHub for your reference if you want to try that yourself. And now I think we'll give it a try. So this is the entry point class I mentioned. And here we have the CDK project, which was just created using the CDK init command. And I added this um, definition with the commands. And now I think I lost my mouse, but Maybe I'll get it to work anyway. That's not convenient. Sorry about that. Zoom ate my mouse. Where is it? So, so I will first build the the website. I will then build the CDK project, and I will deploy it. Now. Oh. Uh, 
I'm very sorry for not seeing my own mouse pointer here, which makes it kind of difficult. There we go. So it was deployed and this is the URL. And with that, we will we will be able to get the weather forecast as you know it from the web API sample. So that's how simple it is to get any ASP.NET Core site running on AWS Lambda. Thank you very much. Cool, thank you, Leo.